This is actually not a mini cake. This is actually a harpsichord parchment rose. Hello everyone, my name is Joyce Shen, and today I'm going to show you how to make a parchment rose for the harpsichord. Once you take the rose kit out of the package, there should be two sheets of rose patterns from number one to number nine. Also included, um, you will find a stack of paper um, where you will transfer your cutout rose patterns to that. And what's also included in the package, you will find leather cutting tools that will be useful for punching out all the rounded shapes. And you should also use your own pair of scissors and X-Acto knife or scalpel knife. Step one, cut out the patterns. So this step should be fairly straightforward. Um, use your uh, pair of scissors or use your X-Acto knife to just cut out the patterns and make sure that you leave enough room outside the border. And once you've done that, it should look more or less like this. And the reason you want to have enough space outside the borders because you're going to be gluing those space um, so that having more surface area will have, give you more control when you're doing the actual cutting part. Step two, begin with the number nine motif or pattern. So for this project, you can really start cutting with any number you want, um, but I've decided uh, to begin with number nine because this is the easiest pattern to start with. It's really just a circular border uh, that has a series of circular shapes um, that will be uh, punched out. Um, and so just get yourself oriented, uh, make sure you understand where you need to be glued, which is within inside the border and also outside the border. And I'll suggest using an artist's um, brush or whatever tool that's uh, best for you. Uh, I use the artist's brush to give myself more control. And you can use any glue, uh, white glue or wood glue, um, that's better for paper. And so I already diluted the glue a little bit um, and don't put too much. And just as you can see, just make sure it's within the border because this is the area that will be actually um, cut out at the end. But for now, it's better for secure uh, for securing the rows with the fine paper. So yeah, just put a little bit, but not too much, and also outside the border itself, and make sure that um, everything's fairly precise. Um, and just put it on the fine paper um, and hopefully your paper is not too wrinkly yep like that and cut it out at the end okay so after all that is done then you will need the nine millimeter punch that's included in your kit and you will use that to cut out all the interior uh, little circular shapes right there and before doing that, it might be a good idea for you to start um, by, you know, outside of the pattern itself and just to see how it goes. And you definitely need a hammer for this. And let's see the first one. Oh, didn't quite go through. So, yeah, just try again. And you need just a little bit more. Yep, see, so that one was perfect. And yeah, so you have to do that uh, many times. And remember that after all that's done, then you're going to cut out the interior, the smaller circle um, inside the border. And then the, the next step will be cutting out the rows. But now let's just do this all together. All right, so from the high speed shot, I'm sure you can see that uh, hammering down can create quite a bit of noise. So make sure that um, if you're doing this at night, you have enough soundproof so your neighbor won't hate you. Um, and yeah, and here we run to another problem is there's accumulation of the paper within the punch itself. So I usually use this little nail or something sharp and just to get it out and you will probably have to do that periodically when you're dealing with, um, you know, the punch.
So as you probably can see here, or if you're already, uh, this repetitive process is pretty satisfying. And oops, I had a little bit of um, missing footage there, so I just kept going. And yeah, I hope you're having fun at this moment already. And it's, you know, it's the first step. Yay! Done! So that was pretty satisfying. Um, yeah, let's move on and do the next, which is to cut out the interior circle. And for this, I actually used my scalpel knife because uh, I felt there would be more control. But of course, you can use scissors as well. But if you're using, uh, well, using either, uh, probably more for the exacto knife or scalpel knife, just make sure you flip it over and check whether the circle is thoroughly cut through because you don't want at the end when you're removing the circle and there's kind of residual paper that you didn't cut through and that will make the removal a little bit messy and not as clean cut. And yeah, and this is also done. That's pretty. Um, I think I was pretty happy and satisfied at this point already. And this was just the first one. And to finish off, then you use uh, scissors um, to cut through. And just to see what I'm doing here, I never really cut through, you know, I never really close the scissors because I always find that will leave a little bit um, closing where it just, it will change the position of the scissors itself and just let the blade kind of uh, go through the shape. Uh, it, sh it should be pretty easy if you have a pretty sharp and pretty nice uh, pair of scissors or uh, like mine. And yeah, done. And once you cut it through, just remove the paper. There should be no glue. It should be pretty easy to come off. And there you go. Good job. Then look at this. This is the the border for the the. the exterior the outer circle of the rose. Step three, number eight motive or pattern. So this is also pretty similar to what you did. You're going to glue uh, the middle of the rose just within the border and right outside the border. And you will need the six millimeter punch and also the 2.5 millimeter punch. And the bigger punch is for the interior of the border, as shown in the video, and also for the exterior, right there. Um, and then the smaller punch is for this little rose petal and then the little detail on the border. So let's get started. So similarly, you're going to glue it on um, the fine paper and start with your small punch. And this is pretty straightforward and it should be even easier. You don't need as much force uh, with a hammer because it should be pretty easy to come off. And just, you know, be, be patient, be careful, and enjoy the process. And I also punch out, you know, the little detail by the border. Once you're done with the small punch, uh, then move on to the bigger punch. And you're going to use that for the interior of the border. And once you've finished that, you're going to use your pair of scissors to cut it out. Then move on to the exterior border. And uh, just so you know, the exterior border has a little bit more shape to it. So you can choose to either e use your X-Acto knife to cut it out or use a pair of scissors. Um, again, uh, scissors give myself more control, so I stick with that. 
So at the end, your motif should look more or less like what's shown on the screen. Step four, number six motif. So you're going to repeat like what you've done with the other two patterns by gluing in the middle of the uh, motif without touching the border and also outside the border. And for this, you will need the eight millimeter punch for the circular shape that you see. And there are only about, um, I see 12 of those, so it shouldn't take too long and it should be a fairly straightforward and easy process. And once that is done, uh, as you will see on the screen here, you have a little residue area. And to complete the shape, I was tackle with the curve uh, area first before um, using probably a um, X-Acto knife against the ruler to cut out the other side. And the reason I do that is because if you start with a straight line, by the time you have to cut the curved side, uh, you don't have very much support left. So I find it more secure if you start with the curved side first, then use um, your X-Acto knife and cut against the ruler, which will give you a very clean cut at the end. And I think there's a little footage missing here, but I actually ended up cutting the um, outside the border first before tackling the interior uh, which is different from what I've done in the past and for this one I actually end up just putting a little support um, like I think I just put the little screw uh, or nail over that start line in the middle and then I was using my scalpel knife and just cut it against a ruler which um, you know it's just much cleaner to do it this way and um, make sure that you also flip it over and just make sure all the lines are thoroughly cut. And once that is done, you have a very pretty number six motif as showing the picture. Step five, number five motif or pattern. So you're going to repeat what you've done previously by gluing the middle um, of the pattern to the fine paper and also just right outside the border. And for this, you will need the 2.5 millimeter punch for the little rose petal and also the interior of the border. And just, you know, as you can see, it's quite intricate. So just make sure you know where exactly the punch should go. And you may also use something so to secure the middle for easy cutting. And let's get started. And so this process should be pretty straightforward here. Um, but then just so you know, this is really time consuming and I would say I probably spend the most time for number five motif and I kind of split it into two days. So just make sure that you're patient and still careful and have a lot of concentration for this because it's just really complex. And also don't forget uh, once you've done all of that and just check if there's a little details you haven't cut like this one. like that needs to be cut before cutting out the border. And as you can see, I cut out the border and I also use the X-Acto knife to make sure that all the lines are through before cutting the whole rows out. And I apologize here, I didn't document all the cutting of this footage, but it should be pretty self-explanatory. Step six, number one and number three motifs. So you're going to repeat uh, basically you, what you have done. And I would recommend probably starting with number three, which is slightly bigger. And you will need the 10 millimeter punch uh, for the interior border and then 2.5 millimeter punch for the little small detail and also for number two motif as well. And you're going to glue in the middle of the pattern and then just glue right outside the border. And as you've seen, like the last pattern, the little dashed line, um, that means where you're going to curve up your pattern. Okay, and this is what it looks like after you cut um, the first step. And next step, I'm using the bigger punch and to punch up the border. And I use a scissors to just cut them through and also for the exterior border. Um, and I didn't um, document for number two motif because they're rather similar and it's the same design and makes you curve up that. And this is what number one motif looks like. Step seven, borders. 
So this one uh, requires number two, number, uh, number four, and number seven patterns. And they're essentially the kind of vertical borders that will make the row stand up. And for this one, I didn't get to say previously is that it's better for number four and number seven uh, to be, um, you know, uh, on the same bigger piece of paper and glue it to the fine paper, just so you have a little bit more control. And I would definitely start um, punching out the interior of number four, which I didn't get to do. Um, that was a mistake, um, which um, now I learn. And so this way you will just have a little bit more control because at this point, I remember when I, was, when I was making the rows, I actually had to glue in one part so that it still has a little bit um, attachment to, the, to both paper because otherwise it would just fall out. Um, and for the number seven, just make sure that you're cutting out all the lines and uh, it's the same thing for number two. You also need the punching. And for number two and number four, you're using the six millimeter punch. And yeah, that's good to work. Step eight, assembly. This is probably the most exciting, but also most challenging part of the whole process. But if you made it here, please make sure you pat yourself in the back and just be happy. And so for this step, you're going to put these patterns you've cut uh, together. And for the first one, you are going to do number eight and number nine and make sure that everything on number eight can be seen through number nine and just adjust it accordingly and use the artist's brush and then really uh, put on appropriate amount of glue and just wait and you can put it inside a book to uh, secure it. And the next one would be number five and number six. Um, this one's slightly trickier because number five is extremely intricate and just make sure that everything of that little details can be seen through the frame of number six. And after that is done, then you can start building it up from number one. The numbers on your um, motive pattern pretty much tells you the order of how everything should go. So number one is the bottom of the rows. Then it goes with number two, the border that you built. And make sure you just look at this um, picture here where you pause on the screen and see how everything's built together. And I would say this is pretty tricky, just understanding which one is uh, curving in or curving out. Um, or to the other one um, and just you know you can always flip it over and remember oh what what needs to be seen and what doesn't need to be seen and I thought um, number two to number three and then number three to number four is quite tricky just um, because you need to make sure they're fitting it perfectly together so really take your time and you know um, if the backside doesn't look as pretty or as neat like mine doesn't look that pretty but then once you flip it over uh, it's fine as long as they're firmly secured and so yeah this is a little uh, time lapse of what I what I've done um, in one shot and I think the whole assembly may have taken me I don't know, 30 minutes um, or something like that. I mean, I did wait for um, the patterns to dry in between. Um, but yeah, it definitely took some time and just, you know, look at what I'm doing there. Um, I Well, I did curve up those patterns first. Um, but then I was pretty, you know, make sure everything's fitting in. Um, you don't have to glue it right away. You can always dry run, dry fit it first and see if you need to adjust accordingly. And again, even if something's not fitting like 100%, as long as they're, you know, gluing together securely, um, and, you know, the 98%, 99% of the shape is there, it's going to look really beautiful. And yeah, I would say the star shape, like number three, number four, those are pretty hard. But once you get to number five and number six, um, um, you know, number five and number six is hard when you're gluing those two motifs together. But once the border is done, then you just kind of layer it up. And it does kind of look like a little cake, huh? Right? Um, anyways, 
Thank you for watching this tutorial. My name is Joyce Chen, and thank you Zuckerman Harpsichord International for giving me the opportunity to show you this video. You could also check out my own channel down below in the link, and I do post weekly performances. And thank you, and have a great day.